Hi everybody, Joe here from Show to Speak Photography. Very nice to see your smiling face back here for lab number three of our HDR Merge tutorial. In this session, we're gonna go over using the HDR Merge plugin for Luminar Neo as a plugin from Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. So we're gonna take our images, we're gonna bring them into Adobe Lightroom we're gonna take a look at them. We're gonna choose which ones we wanna bracket. We're gonna send them out to Neo as a plugin. We're gonna work some magic there in Neo, do the HDR merge there, work a little magic, send them back to Lightroom, do some finishing touches there. So, hey, thanks for uh, being here for part three of this uh, Learning Lab series. Let's get learning. Okay, so I am here inside of Adobe Lightroom and I'm going to merge some uh, images together to make a nice HDR and we're going to use Luminar Neo the HDR merge uh, plugin specifically as a plugin from Lightroom okay so we're in the image library in Lightroom and I'm going to find my five brackets and they are right here and so once I have all five of these highlighted all I have to do is just go down here on the film strip and right click on one of the highlighted ones there's five as you see highlighted in the series and now i'm going to go to export and then i'm going to go up and find the luminar neo section and i'm going to select hdr merge in luminar neo and you'll see it's going to send those pictures over to luminar neo okay we'll see the luminar neo logo as it starts to load up and in a second or two we will have our images. And now you're gonna see right off the bat, you're gonna see this interface looks a little different than when we were working within Luminar Neo, uh, not using it as a plugin. So using it as a plugin, the interface is slightly different here. And, and actually I kind of like this interface better because I can see my images a little bit better here. Um, so you notice that we still have the gear right here and same thing applies. Uh, these settings aren't sticky, so you will have to change them uh, every time you do launch the plugin. So again, this was, you know, shot from a drone. So we know that we definitely want auto alignment. No question about that. Uh, and I'm not overly concerned with chromatic aberration in this image. And uh, that could be ghost reduction because there's uh, cloud stick. So there could be some ghosting in the cloud. So let's turn that on. And of course, it's going to pull from the reference image. And you'll see here, that's the zero, zero that it's selecting and, it, and for whatever reason it actually doesn't display it there in the plugin version but if you click on the carrot here and open up the uh, drop out the fly out menu you'll see that it is the zero zero point zero or the the reference photo and of course ghosting is set to medium and that always seems to work fairly well so we'll leave that and now all we need to do is click merge Okay, so we have now merged together and you'll see this screen will appear. And again, it looks a little bit different using it as a plugin. It does open straight up to the preset tab. We're not in that catalog section, right? And the catalog actually is not available when you launch Neo as a plugin through Lightroom. So uh, you see we're right in our preset section and now we can kind of play around with this and see what we like um you know maybe we want to use something like uh eh, landscapes we'll look at landscapes see if there's anything in here that looks nice uh, it's not a long exposure but that doesn't look too bad actually I, I could dial that back a little bit and i think that might look nice it, it is a sunset that looks okay clean light gives us a little bit of drama there in the sky um no no so let's go with long exposure but now I'm just gonna I'm gonna dial this back uh, maybe about 40 percent or so um, that looks kind of nice I'm kind of happy with that and now we can go up to the uh, tab up here and we can click edit and when we click edit we're gonna get all of our tools that we would normally have if we were just using Luminar Neo so now I can do stuff like accent AI and bring a little of that in and Let's see what the sky enhancer does. It gives us a little bit of drama in that sky. Again, I kind of like that. Um, you know, in this picture, yeah, I could even swap out this sky if I wanted to. 
So of course I can do that here if I wanted to do a, a sky replacement. Um, really from there, there's not a tremendous amount that I would want to do here. Maybe uh, take a little bit of a look at the highlights and bring those down a little bit. Maybe open up these shadows uh, a little bit. That looks pretty good. Um, don't confuse color here. Color is actually really white balance, uh, not to be confused with color down here. So color here, I would definitely make some adjustments. I really want this building to pop. So I'm really going to bump up the saturation uh, and maybe even a little bit of the vibrance as well. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask that just to the building. So I'm going to actually just use the uh, brush and I'm just going to brush this in on the building. Right there. And there we go. And that looks pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that. So that made a that building really pop. Uh, so that looks pretty good. And then from there, there's not a lot of other things I think I would really like to do with this. Um, you know, maybe I would want that building to pop a little bit more. So maybe let's go back over to develop and let's just pop up the exposure. Maybe yeah, we'll go like 0 0.36 and then we're going to mask that in with the brush again. And we're just going to apply that just to the building. Just to really give that building some extra pop. All right. And yeah, there we go. So once I'm happy with the changes that I have made, I'm just going to hit apply and it's going to send us right back to Lightroom. And we are back in Lightroom and you'll see we have our Luminar Neo edit here in Lightroom. It automatically loaded into the stack with the rest of the pictures there. And it looks pretty good. And of course now I still have all my develop tools in Lightroom if I want to use them. So that's also pretty amazing. And you know, yeah, we did a pretty good job with that. But now if there's something here that I, I want to tweak a little bit, maybe I want to maybe put a little vignetting in here, right? And of course we could have done this in Neo, but maybe I want to do it here, right? So I want to drop a little vignette in and really kind of highlight that building and the, the fisherman here. Um, you know, I can do that and I can use any of the Lightroom AI masking tools as well. Maybe I decided I want to make that little fisherman pop out a little bit more. Let's uh, go to the masking tool and we'll see what we can do with that. And let's see what Lightroom thinks the subject is in this image. Okay, it can't figure out what the subject is and that's fine. So what we'll do is we'll just brush in what we want. And let's move it on over. Make a nice small brush. And we'll give this Fisherman here, a little extra pop. Maybe we'll bring his exposure up slightly. Eh, maybe, uh, yeah, like 0 0.48 or so. That looks pretty good. And if I'm happy with that, I can just close this out. Now we gave him a little extra pop there. Let's close the mask. And yeah, so, and when I'm ready, of course, I can just go on and export this out of Lightroom. So, Really doing it this way, if you're a Lightroom user, you have the benefit of using that impressive catalog system that is built into Lightroom for organizing and cataloging all of your shoots. Um, you still have all the power of Luminar Neo and the ability to do your merge from Lightroom right into Neo as a plugin and then back into Lightroom with still all of your tools available. So really this is just a great way to do uh, your HDR edits, in my opinion. I really enjoy this workflow. I, I think that Skylum has done a great job getting this to work as a plugin in Lightroom. Um, I really love the workflow. So in part two of the series, I had mentioned that you can merge anywhere from one to 10 photos using the HDR merge function. So what would happen if you just did one? Well, hey, Let's check it out. So we're here in Lightroom. We have this one image and let's just take a look at the histogram and see what it looks like. So we do have some clipping on the far right side here, 
but it's nothing really uh, overly substantial. Let's take a look in the develop tab. And we can turn on the clipped areas. And honestly, uh, it's very little. It shows up in red, and you can see it up here. Uh, there isn't a tremendous amount of clip data here, really. Uh, it's actually pretty well exposed. So this should be a great test of doing just one. So let's see what would happen if we did one photo and we create an HDR out of it. So we're going to right click on it. We're going to go to export. We go to the Neo section, HDR merge in Luminar Neo and Lightroom will shoot this off to Neo as a plugin. And you'll see the Neo logo come up as it loads the image. And there, of course, we have just the one photo. Now, obviously, auto alignment has been removed, ghost reduction removed, because there's only one picture, so you can't select those. We could do chromatic aberration reduction. And again, we didn't have any of that in the original, so there's no reason to think we're going to have it now. So I'm just going to click on Merge. And you'll see it starts to process. And of course, we can now take this photo and use all the presets. We can use all the editing, but I'm not going to do that because I want to just bring it back into Lightroom and take a look at it side by side against the original. And so we can see what it did. All right. So, um, yes, of course, we have all the presets. We have all the editing tools, but I'm just going to apply this so we can look at them in Lightroom side by side and see what effect the HDR merge had on one single image. Okay, so it's bounced us back to Lightroom and it's loading in now into the stack here in our film strip. And there they are. So I'm going to go over to the library. I'm going to select both of these and let's do a side by side comparison. All right, let's take a look. So on this side here, we have the HDR merged photo. And on the right side, we have the original. So there are definitely changes. You can see uh, definitely an increase in the shadow depth, an increase in color. Uh, a lot of the blue has come back in the sky. So it actually really did kind of a pretty cool job of just taking this one photo and creating a, a pretty uh, well-exposed image out of it, using it as a, a one-shot HDR merge uh, image. So yeah, I kind of like that. I kind of like the results. And of course, we still have all of the tools in Lightroom uh, that we could use in the edit tab if we wanted to. So yeah, that worked out pretty well. All right, so one of the things that's important to talk about is pricing for Luminar Neo. So of course, uh, to utilize this workflow, what do you need? Well, you're going to need a copy of Luminar Neo and you're going to need the HDR Merge plugin that is separate, sold separately from Neo, depending on how you buy the license. So if you choose the subscription route, the subscription currently is $99 per year, and it gets you not just Luminar Neo and all of its future updates, but all of the plugins as well, including this HDR Merge plugin. So that's really a great deal. You can buy Neo just straight out upright and buy a lifetime license. And then you can buy the HDR Merge plugin for an additional $49. That's another way of going as well. And there are always sales and coupons and things like that. And in fact, if you check out the notes to this channel, you will see a coupon code to save you a little bit of money and uh, you know help you make use of that. So, hey, that's pretty much the way the pricing goes. And uh, I hope that helps you. All right, I hope you found that helpful. And if you did, please do me a favor and hit like, hit subscribe, and ring that bell so you get notified of future updates to this channel. That would really help me out. And it's something you can do that's nice for me if I helped you out, and it's free. Hey, so um, again, I appreciate you. Feel free to leave a comment if there's anything you didn't understand or there's something else you'd like me to cover. Feel free to drop me a comment. I do try and answer most of the comments, as many as I can on this channel. And I always appreciate hearing from you guys. And I'm going to continue to add to this series. So be on the lookout for additional v uh, videos coming to this, uh, this playlist. So thanks for watching. 
I appreciate you, like I said, and I will see you on the next one, YouTube. Bye-bye.